Can you recreate this KPI chart? I'm so excited for this workout Wednesday. I love the KPI element. Let's hop into it. I've got the instructions copied over here. Since there's a lot of them, I'm going to be deleting them as we go, just so I don't have to scroll as much. But the first thing we're going to do is add an element, a table element. We can see that we're looking at a source uh, of the plugs electronic, hands-on lab. Select that one. All right. And we'll take note that the profit and revenue are hiding in the metrics tab. Again, if you are Using your own Sigma instance, not following along on the WOW Sigma instance, you may need to recreate these calculations or recreate these metrics. Hidden data tab will do that last. And in a single visualization element, we're going to add all of these different things. And again, this is part of why I love the KPI element. It's so simple. It is mwah, chef's kiss. So what we're going to do is come to this and create a child visualization. I'm going to come over here and select the KPI element. Let me swap these so we can see our instructions next to it. We've got show profit for the value. So this is uh, just identifying what we're going to put on the value. Like we already said, the profit is in the metrics tab. So not in the column section, but in the metrics. So let's pull metrics up here. We've got a sum. Add sales month to the timeline to show a trend over time and filter to only show the last 12 months. All right, so we're going to pull in the date into the timeline section. We can see that it is automatically pulling in everything by month. Uh, it's date truncated to month up here. We can see that. And you can see here that when I hover over um, each section of the area chart, it updates the number. This is part of what makes the KPI element so awesome is, again, this thing is uh, built in out of the box for us. But next, we want to show only the last 12 months. This is really easy to do with Sigma. I'm going to just click the downward facing arrow, select filter, and then we're going to do the last and just type in 12 months. I believe that it doesn't show the current month. I think I was looking at this challenge earlier and saw that. But if you need to, to select the current month, it's right there. But I think it's just the last 12. All right, so we'll delete that. And then perform a period over period analysis with a comparison of the previous, previous month. All right, so what we're looking to do is basically answer, is our profit up or down compared to the previous month? So Sigma has built in an awesome comparison um, option into the KPI element. So right now we can see that our um, option is selected to none for a period. Um, so we do want to show the period over period analysis of the comparison to the same month. So we are using the same field. So I can just select the previous month and we can see that Sigma automatically creates the calculation for us and the labels and the arrows. And then what's super cool is that it can also hover over this and it'll automatically update. This number that is just like default displayed there is going to be the most recent completed month because again, we unchecked the current month. So I'm doing this in February. We can see that the last completed month is January. So it's comparing it to the previous last completed month, which is December. All right, we're trucking along. And next, we're going to create a custom tooltip to show the profit margin, which is defined as profit divided by revenue. So a custom tooltip is going to be in the marks card defaults to the color section, but we're going to choose tooltip. And since this is a custom one seems and this is wow, so I know we're only creating one element. I'm just going to create the calculation directly in the KPI. So I'm going to click add. And we're going to do a new column, which is at the top. Sorry, I think my screenshot is cutting that out, but just know it's the top option when you scroll up there. And what are we going to do again? Sign as profit. I do want to select the metrics uh, option for profit to make sure that it does aggregate correctly, that it's applying the uh, metric calculation that is previously defined on the data source as well as um, updating if anything else changes to that metric definition. And then it was revenue. So again, making sure that we're using apples to apples and choosing that metrics one there. That in there, and we're going to name this. So just double clicking on there. 
profit margin. And there we go. Now we can see, whoops, looks like it, it is pulling in the old formatting. So we're just going to change that to be a, there we go. That makes more sense for profit margin. All right, we're going to add a uh, reference mark to show the average profit over the entire period. Looking at the last 12 months, we can see that there's definitely some seasonality. It looks like maybe, you know, folks are buying for Black Friday or Christmas or uh, Boxing Day if we're in Canada or, or another holiday, Hanukkah, anything like that. So let's see what our average is. So we're going to come to the element format and... Um, we're going to add a reference mark. So just selecting this option, click add new. We do want a reference line. And what did we say? Show the average profit. So we're going to do average and then we're going to select what field that we want to pull it in. So profit, there we go. And we can see that this is again calculating over the same time period. Again, since we did choose the filter to be the last 12 months, it will automatically update and that average will automatically calculate or recalculate every time there's a whole month. Let me just hop down to this formatting section. Since we're here and we've got it open, we want to change the label to ABG for just average. Click to show the value and then position the value in the top left. So we've, right now we're in the top right and we want to go top left. All right. Okay. So since I am doing this out of order, we can see that this number is not super user friendly, but I can see that if we had done it in order, we would update this over here. So that's my bad for doing it out of order. Um, let's go do it in the correct order now. <laughs> we can see that the profit should be formatted as a whole dollar. So just clicking on the format field, I like to come up here and do currency and then just uh, go down two decimals. That's my trick for it. Um, again, you can always go down to the downward facing arrow and then format um, and then you can do whole number, currency, uh, custom, basically the same things. Those will all get you backed into the same formatting. Sales month should be formatted as month year. So we can see that it is not labeled on here automatically, even if I create more space for it. And this is basically because we have not told Sigma that we want to see that in there. So let me go there and we are going to do trend and um, we want to show the timeline axes there we go so this is um, now just displaying the labels for it uh, let me come back to the timeline and so that it can format the month appropriately and it was month year so again downward facing arrow and then just selecting the format that we want profit margin should be formatted as a percentage with two decimals let me go to the tool tip I think we had this one. Oops, no, we need one more decimal. So we did change it to a percentage, but now we want to remove those two decimals. The trend shape as an area. It does default to an area, but we can also choose a line if you want to change that. But it looks like we can choose any green. So I'm just going to go with this middle green one. But we can see, again, this partially I think is pretty cool that it automatically highlights the line and then just shades in the area. I think it looks really nice. And then show the tooltip and timeline axes. So again, that's um, what we had displayed there and we had already determined to show the tooltip. Show the comparison to the right of the main value. Okay, so this is just gonna change where this kind of like tagline or this comparison tagline goes. So that's again going to be in the format and we're going to choose comparison. Here we can also see that we can change the kind of calculation or what is used in this display. This can be really helpful, obviously, if you have different types of metrics that you want to show, as well as changing the color, which again is super nice that this is built in. I don't have to create a, an if statement. So if this number is greater than or equal to zero or something like that. And again, you can also select none to have that arrow disappear. All right, so show, we're just going to change where it's located. Whoops. Since we do want to change the formatting layout, we're going to go to the layout section. So we're just going to change the comparison value from below to, and we can see that again, since I've got my instructions over here, it's cutting that off. We could, if this was a live scenario, what I would do is just change the font size to that, or I would maybe have that be under just again, depends on your scenario and what you're looking for size your visualization appropriately. There, there we go. So we do need to, to change that. And we've got all of that. 
Then the optional last one is convert the internal sales month filter to a page control for user interaction. So again, this is basically just saying if you want your end user to be able to edit this filter more easily, go to the filter section and then the kebab or the three dot menu and then convert to page control. This makes it um, accessible to uh, the viewer or just consumer license type. So then they could change and maybe do to include the current month or they could do the last 13 months or whatever reason. But there we go. <laughs> Looks like that is everything since that's the end of my list. The last thing to do would just be to hide the data tab, which would just be selecting these things and moving them to a new page. Whoops, sorry about that. Looks like I just selected that one. Move to new page, there we go. And now we have our KPI element and then I would just hide this page and label this one. All right, thanks for tuning in. I hope you enjoyed this KPI one. Again, one of my favorite elements. This is such an awesome tool. It makes Sigma makes it super easy to use and it's really valuable to provide this kind of insight to your end users. Thanks and I'll see you in the next one.